I think there's a subset that hooks up quite a bit that gets a lot of attention. You know, the, the frat parties on college campuses and all these other stereotypes for what's going on. But I think, by and large, millennials are fairly risk averse. Prolonging it is wise for human beings. Now part of the sexual revolution is around all the sexual repression. It was a sort of statement against that, but we've gone like way too far. I mean, and the media exploits that and tries to exploit those anxieties and vulnerabilities to sell you stuff. We have interesting scripts we're giving to our young people. And so for a lot of our young women, it's this idea that your value is found in your physical attractiveness and your sexiness and your desirability to men. But there is the flip side of that for, for the young man. And so they feel like they're supposed to have this kind of uh, demeanor and approach that they're successful with, with, with women and that they're attractive and that they're, you know, uh, in, in some ways a bit of the player. And that, like, that's part of the adolescent male culture um, that perhaps we unwittingly reinforce is that men do detach sex from feelings. And the part of being a man is to detach it. That's how you prove your prowess and how cool you are, is that you, you really want very little from it. It's just about your hedonistic urges. And, and I think it's absolutely true that men feel bombarded by those pressures, young men, meaning adolescent boys, feel bombarded by those kinds of pressures. Part of what we're doing with pornography, uh, sometimes with, with, we don't intend this, but the message our young people get is that men have this uh, pathological or bad sexuality and women we inadvertently give the message of you have no sexuality right so they sit in these modesty lessons and are told you know here's what immodesty does to young men so safeguard the young men but all the while we never talk about their own sexual curiosities you know we don't do a very good job of helping people really say like I want sex to, to be meaningful for me and how do I create that if their message is to live a good life, to live a right life, I have to cut that part off. I have to be completely away. One, it doesn't sound very desirable, and two, it starts to feel pretty impossible, right? And so the idea of saying, no, 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 the message has never been one to live a healthy life when it comes to sexuality, is to cut that part off, to overcome that. No, it's to channel it. Sexuality is, and it's, and it's a potential that's within us. It's a God-given potential. It's one of the greatest potentials and, uh, that we are blessed with. And yet how we use it matters. If you'll connect that physical to the emotional, and if you'll connect those two together to the spiritual, you have something very, very different than is offered in the permissive hookup, pornography, culture that they're surrounded by. So the whole dating, couple formation, marriage is central.